Hello everyone, this is a video tutorial for the book, The Vagabond's Guide to Successful But Making Them Cheap YouTube Production While Living in Your Van and Making Money at It. The book can be downloaded from livinginyourvan.com and there are numerous other video tutorials available on this channel, though more details for each technique are provided in the book. The book is intended for professional video production on the cheap and in the most inopportune situations. In this tutorial, we're going to use the Vagabond's Super Ken Burns effect and a still camera to do an effect like what they used in the movie Baraka. We're going to do a time-lapse series of shots with a digital still camera. Uh, even a cheap digital still camera probably has a resolution of 4 megapixels or more, which is actually double the resolution of full high-definition video. So because the images are so huge relative to video, what we're going to do is take a series of images spaced a few seconds apart for a good oh, half hour at least. We will then stitch these images together into a video, but because the video is twice the size of full high definition, we can then use the Ken Burns effect and either zoom in on that video or pan across it. This will allow us to get a really cool time-lapse video with dramatic panning and zooming. So, set up your camera on a tripod, lock it down, don't bump it, move it, or anything during the time-lapse shooting. Now, you have to be able to take pictures with the camera without moving or shaking the camera. Now, there's a few ways to perform this next step, and you have to be careful how you do it. You need to take hundreds of pictures for at least 20 minutes to as long as, well, as long as you can stay awake and don't run out of memory or battery on your camera. Now, how you do this depends on your camera. If you have a more expensive still camera, it probably has what is called an intervalometer. It will automatically take pictures at intervals that you set up. Now, the second best is remote control. Many still cameras come with a remote control, and so you don't even have to touch the camera. The third best is to use the timer, the timer feature and the trigger on your camera. But because you are actually touching the camera, you have to be exceedingly careful not to move the camera in any way. Without realizing it, you will move the camera ever so slightly as you press the trigger. Now, if you set the timer to two seconds and then gingerly press the, ca the trigger and then take your hands completely off the camera, the camera won't be tilted or shake when the picture is actually taken. Now, you won't need to take pictures any bigger than four megapixels. So if you want, turn the resolution down on your camera to four megapixel. Uh, as you will see, that you probably will not be able to use images bigger than that anyway. Now, when setting up your camera, try to avoid trees or flags uh, in the view, as these move in the wind and look really strange in time-lapse video. You also want to watch out for where people walk. Keep an eye open for shadows of people that might accidentally fall in the viewing area of the camera. So once you've set up the camera and you're happy with the shot, you now start taking pictures on the clock. I'd recommend one picture every two to 10 seconds. The more pictures you take, the smoother your video will look. So figure out what interval time you want first. Then figure out how long you want to take pictures. I'd recommend a bare minimum of 20 minutes. A half hour is better, and the longer you go, the longer your video, and the more fun the end result is. Now, in this case, I'm using my iPhone's timer feature, and every 10 seconds, I'm triggering a photo with the remote control. I've got my coffee in one hand and remote control in the other, so I'm going to do this for about 45 minutes to an hour. All right, we're back here at our editing computer, and we now drop all those pictures onto the timeline with each picture lasting between one and three frames. If I just play the video, you'll see the time-lapse video we now have. Uh, this is already really nice and dramatic and very usable. 
Now, if you happen to be using one of the Sony Vegas editing programs, you can skip this next step. For most of you, the next step will be to render this video in a 2K format. Now, how this is done will vary depending on what editing program you are using, but if your pictures are standard four to three ratio pictures and not the widescreen photographs, then what you do is to render the video with the largest possible size you can. Most video editing programs will allow you to set a custom video size, but most programs will not render a video wider than 2048 pixels wide. And that's fine, that will suffice. Render that video out 2048 pixels wide. If you're using four to three ratio photographs, you'll want to render it at 2048 by 1536 pixels. If it's widescreen photographs, you'll need to render it at 2048 by 1152 pixels high. I will refer to this video as phase one. Now, chances are if you attempt to play this video on your computer, your computer will catch fire. So don't attempt to play it. We're not interested in playing it. Open a new video project and insert your phase one video into the project. We're now going to set up zooms and pans on this video. We're going to do this with motion paths or keyframes. Now again, how this is done will depend on your video editing program. Now, I happen to be using Sony Vegas, which deals with keyframes in an unusual way. The motion and keyframes are actually applied to the video track, whereas most video editing programs I've used apply the motion to the video or the photo itself. Well, our photos are only two frames long, so applying a smooth motion path to each one is just futile. However, because of the way Sony Vegas happens to deal with motion paths and keyframes, those who are using Vegas can skip the, skip the step of making the phase one video because they can set up the keyframes right on the track itself. So we had to convert our still images into a video in order to apply that motion path. So I'm gonna start by panning across the video, a nice slow pan, the longer the better. I do this by setting up a keyframe with a motion path zoomed in on the left side of the video I'm going to keep the view the same size, but at the end of the video, I set up another keyframe so that the view pans across the video. I now render the video and I get my first result of a stunning time-lapse pan. Now this is normally done with robotic cameras and tripods which sit there and very, very slowly turn the camera over the space of an hour or so while filming. Now that equipment is insanely expensive and we're vagabonds living in our van, so we don't have none of that expensive equipment. But we do have a cheap digital still camera and so we can simulate the effect. We can also zoom in on a part of the video by setting up the first keyframe, taking in the entire frame of the video. And then at the end of the video, we set up a keyframe which focuses in on one small portion of the video. When we render it out, this is the result. Depending on your video editing software, you may even be able to rotate your view. cover many more cheap and free special effects that you can use to spice up your productions in The Vagabond's Guide to Successful But Making Them Cheap YouTube Production while living in your van and making money at it. 
The book can be downloaded from livinginyourvan.com and there are numerous other video tutorials available on this channel, though more details for each technique are provided in the book. The book is intended for professional video production on the cheap and in the most inopportune situations. Yeah.